Okay. Once again, good morning. We are continuing with our lesson on production management. In our previous lesson, we talked about what production is, the meaning of production. Then we also looked at the factors of production. What was obvious of that, we look at the meaning of each of the factors and then the rewards that are associated with each of the factors. Today, we are going to have another aspect of production management. We'll be looking at the forms of production. The forms of production. Take note. The key word here is forms. Because there is another aspect that we also be looking at types of production. And the two are not the same. So you should take note of that. For the forms, when you are doing economics, you talk about types of industry. So you look at the primary, the secondary, and then tertiary. That is what we are going to look at here. But in business management, we have done the categorization into five. So we'll be looking at extractive production or extractive industry. In other words, you can either say extractive production or extractive industry. Then from there, we move to manufacturing production or the manufacturing industry. Or others will say the manufacturing sector. Then we will look at the constructive production or what we call assembly line production. We also look at commercial service commercial service and finally we will end with personal service so these are the forms of production as stated or as categorized in business management so the extractive industry is the same as the one you call primary production in economics the manufacturing together with the constructive industry is what you call the secondary production or secondary industry. Then the two services, the commercial service and personal service. Others refer to the commercial service as business service. That would be the tertiary. So the services are the tertiary. So what is extractive production? or extractive industry and who belongs to that industry you remember when we were looking at the uh, factors of production we talked about land and I made mention of the extractive industry or extractive production there if you understood the concept of land then that is almost the same as the extractive industry because those who engage in that factor of production they belong to the extractive industry now when you say you are extracting something what does that mean that means you are removing something from another thing so for example the sea is land or water bodies are land so you can extract fish from the sea from rivers and so and so forth so that would be in the extractive industry or extractive production so that fish you extracted is a raw material and so you further have to process it you further have to convert it. You further have to transform it into another thing before you can use. 
So then you then move to the second stage. So the extractive industry concerns itself with the extraction of raw materials, which we call gift of nature or from gift of nature or from nature or from land from the sea. Now land here, I'm using land here in its narrow sense. I made the surface of the earth. So when you are logging, when you are lumbering, when you are fishing, you are in the extractive industry. So that is what the extractive industry is all about. It concerns itself with the extraction of raw materials from land, sea, uh, what have you. Then, when you have extracted them, from that gift of nature, then further processing goes on. So what are the examples? We have looked at that one. So when you go to a place where they are mining, all the mining is in the extractive industry. Farming is also a typical example. Fishing is also a typical example. Logging is also an example. Lumbering is also an example. So once it is related or is associated with the land, then you are looking at the extractive industry or extractive production. So that is what the extractive industry or the extractive production is all about. So I said it concerns itself with extraction or extracting raw materials. That is free, they are free gift of nature from the land. And I said the land here, we are using it in its narrow sense. Water bodies, uh, air, solar energy, and so and so forth. So typical examples, as I've already indicated, farming, fishing, drilling, so when you are drilling, logging, lamp or lamping, mining, quarrying, sand weaning, they are all part of the extractive industry. Then you move to the second one. When the raw materials have been extracted, they are further processed. There is transformation, there is conversion. You go through a certain processes, then you manufacture them. They become more useful. And that is that one you will be in the manufacturing sector or manufacturing industry, or that will be manufacturing production. So typical example, when the fisherman brings that raw fish from the sea, the woman who comes to buy the fish may have to, one, either smoke it. So when you are smoking fish, you are in the manufacturing industry, or that is manufacturing production. So a woman who smokes fish is in that industry. Some of them do not smoke, they fry, so frying the fish, that one will be still in the manufacturing sector. So that is for uh, that one. When somebody farms, let's say you harvest wheat, you further process it into flour. So processing the wheat into flour, you are in the manufacturing sector. Somebody will buy the flour, the person will have to make bread, the person will have to, uh, so the baker is also in the manufacturing sector and so on and so forth so baking is also there where would the carpenter be where would the carpenter be so when you come to the manufacturing sector i said it concerns with the conversion that you are changing something or transformation or processing of raw materials produced by those in the extractive industry into either finished product. If it is a finished product, then it can be used. When you buy the bread, 
what you can do is to eat it. So the bread is a finished product. But there are some that you may have to feed them, use it. After it has been manufactured, it has to be combined with other manufactured products or with the uh, raw materials here. So manufactured products and then raw materials will have to come uh, together. Then that will move to the next stage. That will move this next day. So, in the manufacturing center, they all either come out with a finished product or semi-finished product. If it is a semi-finished product, then it will have to be combined with other uh, semi-finished product or finished product and raw materials in order to form a whole that may be useful. So that is the manufacturing sector. So I gave example of baking, smoking fish, Factory workers, they all. So if you go to Nestle, Ghana Limited, that will, that will belong to the manufacturing sector or manufacturing industry. Then from there, you move to the third form of production. You see how logical, systematic they are. From the extractive industry, you move to the manufacturing industry or manufacturing production. Then from there, you move to the next one, which is constructive production. Remember, the extractive production is the same as the primary production. When you come to the manufacturing, we have learned that what you call secondary production, the manufacturing sector is part of it. Then the third one, which is constructive industry or assembly line production is also an aspect of the manufacturing sector as you uh, learned in economics. So what is that? I've already told you in my explanation here. You bring together that is assemble, you assemble. And what are you assembling? Manufactured product or semi-manufactured product and some raw materials in order to build a hole that may be useful. So for example, when you want to, so we don't say we are manufacturing road, but we say we are constructing the road. We don't say you are manufacturing a house, you build a house. We don't manufacture a bridge, we construct it. That means we add finished products of one industry and another. Then we can combine with some raw materials to form that whole, and it's that whole that would be useful. So for example, you manufacture cement. So if you want to build a house, the cement that you have manufactured, the cement will not be useful unless you use it together with another manufactured product. Like for example, it's another person who had manufactured iron rods. Then those in the primary sector or the extractive industry, they have also come up with uh, gravels through the quarry. So they come out with the gravels. And all these should have been to be brought together, together with roofing sheets that have been manufactured. Then you, you have wood and so on and so forth. All these things will have to come together before you can build a house. So building a house will belong to the constructive industry. So you combine the finished product or semi-finished product and raw materials of one industry and then another before you can form that whole. There are other several examples to that. So I indicated here that the constructive production, which is also called assembly line production, concerns itself 
with the, 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 as in this set up puts together or assemble. So when you are putting to, something together, that is what is technically called assemble. So the assemble, what has been produced by the manufacturing and primary sectors into an organized whole. So the bridge has become useful. That is the organized whole. The house is the organized whole. The road that has been constructed is the organized whole. So examples include road construction, bridge construction, building a house, and so on and so forth. So that is for that one. Then we move to the service sector. The first one is commercial service. What is commercial service? Now, if goods have been produced, they should move from the site where the goods were produced to the consumer. The consumer should have access to the goods. So it is through the commercial service activities that the goods will get to the final user. So when you are looking at the commercial service, then that one is the aspect of or that aspect of production that facilitates to, to the key here is facilitates facilitates the efficient operation the efficient operation of the other sectors so what are the other sectors we have talked about extractive we have talked about manufacturing now when you cut that tree it should be transported to the sawmill or to the consumer or to the one that will be using it so transportation facilitates exchange so they will facilitate exchange they facilitate distribution and they facilitate consumption now the goods should be made known to the consumer how do you make the goods known to the consumer through promotion and one aspect of promotion is advertising so advertising will be commercial service now the businessman needs money for a lot of things he needs funds so you have to go to bank for loans when you sell the product, you have to deposit your money at a safer place. So banking will also belong to the commercial sector. Communication in any form, whether through the internet, whether through telephone, whatever it is, communication will also be an example of the commercial sector. All retailers and wholesalers, they belong to that sector. So they are those through whom the goods will also get the final consumer. So the middlemen, wholesalers, so wholesaling, retailing, all those are as well to which I'll talk about wholesaling and retailing in details when we get to marketing management. And that will be when you have come to school. Because looking at the time, we'll be able to finish with production management and continue with our last topic, which will be marketing management when you come to school. So wholesalers or wholesaling, retailers or retailing is also uh, an ex or, or examples of the commercial uh, sector. So that is the commercial sector. That sector facilitates efficient operation of the other sectors. And we have talked about what they facilitate. I mentioned two things. Oh, no, three things. I said they facilitate distribution, they facilitate consumption, and then it also facilitates exchange. And when you talk about exchange, we are looking at buying and selling distribution we have made mention of 
getting the goods to the final user. Transportation comes in there. Wholesaling comes in there. Retailing comes in there. Now, when you even make the goods in excess, you have to uh, put the excess or store the excess in the warehouse. So if you are operating a warehouse, you belong to the commercial sector. So that is for the commercial sector. The last aspect that we are looking at this morning is the personal service or others also refer to it as direct service now as i stand here i am a skilled person a professional teacher and i am rendering my service directly to you the student and you are having direct benefit of what is coming to you then, when it means that when a skilled worker or when a skilled producer renders his service or her service directly to the customer, then that one will be in the personal or direct service. So, the services of teachers, the services of doctors, Drivers, barbers, tailors, and a whole lot of them belong to the personal service, that sector, that aspect of production. So that is the personal service. And don't forget that we said the two services together, they are those you call tertiary production in economics. And don't also forget that the manufacturing production or the manufacturing industry together with the constructive industry is, I said together, the manufacturing industry together with the constructive industry is the one you call the uh, secondary production or the manufacturing industry and the constructive industry are what you call secondary production so you must take note you should know how they have been categorized in business management and how it has been done in economics so in management when you are asked to talk about the forms of production, as much as possible, use the management terms. Use extractive industry. Use manufacturing industry. Use constructive industry. Use personal service. Use commercial service. However, it is also possible for you to be giving uh, them to explain. And the examiner can say, explain these forms of production and you may be giving primary production, secondary production, tertiary production. If the examiner goes by that way, then you also know what to do. You know that the extractive industry is the same as the primary. Then you combine the manufacturing industry and the constructive industry to explain that of the secondary production. And then there's service sector, that is the personal service and commercial service, then that one will be for the tertiary. Now, let me see, there is a question here. Let me see whether uh, I can see that question. Okay, so let's look at this uh, question. That was... Uh, May, June 2005, question 5A, May, June 2005, question 5A, let's look at it. Mention and describe four forms of production, so that is, 
that was the A, mentioned and described four forms of production. No, that was the November 1996, question 7A. November 1996, question 7A. Then the B, the B, the B. Now try your hands on the B. The B says this, and the, the B is uh, November 1996, question 7. So the same question 7B, the question 7B. They say identify and, ex no, the B says put, put the following into the respective forms of production. Put the following into the respective forms of production. You see, the examiner did not give you the form. So this question, the first thing is that you should know the forms of production. And this is business management question. So you should know the forms, ask in what we have done this for the five. So if you look at, if you do it, according to how you are taught in economics, primary production, secondary production and tertiary, you may not get all the math. You may not get all the math. So here, you need to know the forms of production. So you can use a table and then you write primary production. No, you write the extractive production, manufacturing production, constructive production, personal service and commercial service. And then you now look at the items provided and then you now you send them to where they belong to. So the I was farmer. So where would the farmer be? Is it extractive, manufacturing, constructive, personal service, or commercial service? The second one is factory worker. Factory worker. That is I I. I I I banker. Banker. I be carpenter. V, teacher. V, I, baker, baker. V, I, I, miner, miner. V, I, 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 insurance agent, insurance agent. I, X, fisherman, fisherman, and X. Shoemaker. So you and that was ten good marks. So you just know you should know the forms of production, and then you send them there. So that is uh, for uh, that. Now what I want you to do is this. I want everybody to answer this question. You screenshot your answer and then you send to me. Don't put it on the WhatsApp platform because anybody can copy it. Send to me privately. See to it that yours become visible. So right where you are supposed to put them into the respective forms of production so that is uh, for uh, that one yesterday I saw another person that is related to this one but that one was in economics let me see whether it is on this phone. I don't know whether I took the shot on this phone or the other uh, uh, phone I think it is on this phone now look at this one too. This is economic question, and this is wasi. It's wasi. Uh, that one, uh, I did not actually check the year, but this this was the question in economics. They said it was question three uh, B. Question three B. Uh, they said. Uh, question three, question 
No, that was question 4A. Classify, classify the following economic activities. So you remember when we were talking about production, we said it is economic activity. And in defining production, the phrase economic activity is very, very important. That is why I stress that when I was teaching what production is. So they said classify. So you are going to classify. The management person said put. Here they said classify the following economic activities as either primary, secondary, or tertiary. This is economics person. This is economics person. So let's look at it. I road construction. I am felling of trees. I I I baking of bread. Ivy selling of bread. V cleaning of carpet or carpets is carpet cleaning of carpets they are building a house they are and an afforestation program an afforestation program then the last one which is they are I, I, smoking of fish. So this is economics person. The, you are supposed to hear, the, you are given the headings. So you are going to do the classification on the basis of primary production, secondary production, and tertiary production. Now, to do it in that categorization, when you are through with that, when you are through that, try to categorize it into the forms of production as laid in business management. Extractive, manufacturing, constructive, commercial service, and personal service. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our lesson on forms of production. What you need to do is to pick your management book three, then you study after watching this video, you study the material. Don't forget that there will be special exams when you come to school to do the categorization, to categorize you into A, B, and C. And you know your performance will determine where you will be and as to whether you will need intervention or not to meet again another time to continue with our topic, production management, where we tackle another aspect of it. So we shall now go into what production management is. Remember, the broader topic is production management. If we have looked at what production is, we have looked at the uh, agents of production or what we call factors of production, then this morning we look at the forms of production. We will be looking at what production management is, then we look at the production process, then other aspects of, uh, we shall be looking at the uh, location of industry, we look at the, uh, a lot of other things. Till we meet again another time to continue with this topic, production management. Good morning and have
and very nice day. Bye-bye.